Okay, the first thing you want to do is put on a nice white base coat. I actually did uh, prime this first with some just some rattle can primer. I was just trying something out, uh, trying to get the body a little bit smoother. But uh, other than that, it's just wood right under that. We're going to paint this one in a red fish or a red drum pattern and uh, I'm going to start by covering the entire thing with a pearlized white. So let's get that in our, I just want to shake it up, let's get that in our brush. The next thing we're going to do is take a piece of this tool and I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger than my bait. tightly so that's nice and snug. Before I get too far along on that I want to make sure that my fabric here is straight. That'll save me some time. Okay, once it's on there, I'm going to give it another look. That looks nice. Nice and tight. So what I do, whenever I make a custom color, I write out a little card like this. Um, just a little index card. And I kind of write down my recipe, so to speak, so that I can make that same color again and what this one is is it's sort of a gray shiny gray for a scale pattern uh, because a redfish has a pretty heavy heavy scale pattern I want to add some in the wide area of the belly so what I need for this is pearl silver pearl white black and a thinner, which is basically just the Createx, you know, thinning solution. So what we're going to do, according to our recipe, we need five parts pearl silver. So I'm going to do five drops. Five parts pearl white. One, two, 
one part black and actually it's not really written on the card but it's actually going to be less than one part. What I typically do is just get the least little dab on the end of my stirring stick here and that's enough because black goes a long ways. Okay, and then uh, five parts thinner. Okay, we're gonna stir that up real good. I'm just gonna do a kind of a grazing, grazing shot down. Now that we've got that on there, we're ready to do the kind of the copper color. But before that, I'm gonna do some cooking and I'm gonna cook redfish. So let's go over there. Check it out. I'll have to excuse the grackles, they are upset. Well, these fish were caught by my parents. I'm going to put them skin side down, straight onto the grill. Put a little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. A little bit of Italian dressing. Okay, now we're going to mix up our copper color and I think what we're going to need is a little bit of red, although I want to use an iridescent, nah it comes off pink. Let's do an orange and a red and then a little bit of white. Let's, let's start with that and see what we got because it's primarily orange. I'll mix up quite a bit, so I'm going to do ten of those. Let's start small with the white.
Yeah, because that kind of gives it a creamy color. You know what? Let's do a little bit of this iridescent yellow. Five of that. Mmm, digging that. Let's do five more of that. Yeah, I'm going to do away with the red altogether. It doesn't need that. Another white. More yellow. Oh yeah, we're getting there. Let's do a little opaque yellow just to kind of speed it up. That opaque puts a dent in the color a lot faster than the pearlized will. Or the uh, iridescent, sorry. This is why I write these down because it takes a lot of trial and error to find that just right color. I'm going to put a drop of iridescent red in there just because I have a feeling it needs it. Could be totally wrong. One thing's for sure, I am going to have plenty. Sorry, I keep getting out of frame here. It's actually pretty difficult to film this stuff and do it. Okay, I think we're pretty close. I feel like it needs a little bit more yellow. Three drops opaque. Couple more drops of white, opaque. And I'm gonna call that pretty good. I may feel different once I get it on there, but we're gonna we're gonna try that. The final recipe wound up being 10 parts iridescent orange, four parts opaque white, 15 parts iridescent yellow, 11 parts opaque yellow, and one part iridescent red. And what we're left with is a shiny copper orange color. Let me start down the back. Trying to leave a little high spot here around the belly. And then swooping, kind of swooping down. Let's go check on our fish. Looking good. Smells good too. We're gonna kind of test this with a fork. 
Yeah. I think we are ready. See how it's starting to flake a little? There it is, the final product. Really excited to give this a try. Wow. That's really good. It's perfect. And I like how easy it is to cook. Super easy to cook. Mmm. It's delicious. Here, try a piece. Like I was saying, my parents recently went to Louisiana and caught these redfish and brought them back for me to try. I've never had any myself. Um, it's my first time to try them, but my first impression is that it's very good. It's a nice light colored fish that's a little bit like tilapia, takes the seasoning really well, and it's very delicious. All right, the next thing we're gonna do after we've eaten our fish is mix some brown paint. So I'm gonna mix green and red. I'll put some iridescent green in as well just to kind of give it a little bit of a sparkle. There's some more green that's looking pretty red. off the mesh very carefully Excellent. Put some opaque white in. What I want to do is just ever so slightly highlight those gills. This is really hard to do with the camera. So what I'm doing is I'm spraying onto the paper and then letting the overspray just kind of splash over slightly on the gills. 
on the inside of that gill. Like so. The other thing I want to do is spray classic spot on the red fish. Okay, we're going to try and be symmetrical here. Next is to put just a slight highlight around the eyes. So I'm going to do spray in the middle and then let the overspray kind of just go around the outside. All right, for the spot, I'm gonna use a brush because it's a pretty sharp, detailed feature. And I could airbrush it on there, but I kinda have a little bit more control over it. All right, now we're ready for eyes and clear coat. Got a little piece of duct tape on the counter here. I'm gonna mix roughly equal portions of this epoxy. I got these um, eyes that I basically just got off of Amazon and I'm going to go with more of the yellow orange color. I'm going to take a drop these do have an adhesive on the back but what I'm really trying to get is some epoxy behind the eye I've noticed that if I don't, these tend to kind of want to suck in that epoxy when I do that final clear coat. Now I'm going to take a lighter here and pop the bubbles real quick. And then I'm going to let that sit for a while.
using a basically a one inch bristle brush because I've got to I've got to work fast. I'm doing my best to keep this thing in the frame, but I'm honestly pretty concerned about getting this all on in time. These big ones, you gotta be quick because this stuff starts setting up faster than you'd think. Alrighty, let's get the power hooked up and get that thing rolling. Put too much heat on it because even though the wood is sealed I feel like when I hit it with like a hair dryer or something to soften up the um, epoxy it heats the wood up and it kind of wants to off gas and it starts pushing bubbles out and those are really hard to control so I don't want this thing to get too warm on the inside so that's why I'm just lightly brushing it Just a quick pass with the flame will pop all those bubbles. They may reform, so you gotta kinda watch it every once in a while. I'm gonna let that spin for a while and then I'm gonna come check on it again. Just took the uh, lure off of the wheel and it's, it's cured enough to where I can touch it uh, without leaving any kind of marks on it. I'm still gonna hang it overnight and let it uh, fully cure, but it's not gonna sag anymore at this point. Tomorrow I'll take it outside and try and get some, uh, some nice high resolution photographs of it. But overall, very pleased. Redfish.